It's time again for the Science Bowl. Zoo Parade for five. What big teeth the hippo has are actually a pair of these. Science Potpourri for 10. Would a snake most likely eat every day? Every week, Dateline Science for 10. Why are some elephants wearing necklaces these days? Green things for 15. And now, here's your host, Mr. Z himself, Dave Zarin. Thank you and welcome to the Science Bowl, the science quiz program here in the Prince George's schools where we bring together elementary and middle school students and test their science IQs. We ask you to play along with us. See how many of these questions you can answer today and raise your own science IQ. Today, two outstanding middle schools here to play our game. Let's meet them right now. First from Robert Goddard Montessori, we're welcoming Sylvie to the show. Sylvia is waving to everybody. She didn't even need my instructions. Sam, could you wave to everybody too? And Teddy is with us. All students who have played our game before. Good luck to you today. And playing against them is Walker Mill Middle School. Let's meet Riley Alicia, also a veteran of our show. Nice to have her back. William, first time on the show. William, nice to have you with us today. And Navy, nice to have you here as well. You know, here on the Science Bowl, we have six different categories of questions, and let's share those categories with you right now. Okay, Mr. Z, here's today's categories. Green things, questions about plants and all things green and growing. Zoo Parade, a Noah's Ark of questions about animals. Body systems, we'll see how much you know about yourself, about things like breathing and growing and digesting your food. Let's get physical. Questions that test your knowledge of physics and chemistry, earth science and space science. Then there's science potpourri. Here's a grab bag of science questions. Everything from air pollution to the kitchen zinc. And finally, Dateline Science. We'll ask you about science history and science in the news. And here on the Science Bowl, we arrange our game board according to question difficulty with the easier questions on the left. They're worth five and 10 points. The tougher ones worth 15, 20, and ultimately 25, the toughest of them all. We start our teams out with 50 points apiece. We never penalize them for incorrect answers. End of the two rounds today, one of these two teams will come back to play again and perhaps become the third of our fourth semifinalists in this year's middle school competition in this, our 37th year of Science Bowl. Go over and make sure everything works properly before we start. Let's go to that red team. And Sam, would you try that buzzer? It looks good. It sounds good. Good luck to you and Sylvie and to Teddy and Riley Alicia. How about the green teams? It looks A-OK -okay as well. Good luck to you guys over there, William, Riley Alicia, and Navy. All right. May the better team win. We go alphabetical, so R before W, so Robert Goddard, let's play the bowl. Go, Sam. Green things for 15. Green things for 15 points. Instead of concrete and steel, buildings nowadays are being constructed of mass timber, capital M, capital T, which is glued wood panels from firs and pine trees that are both representatives of what group of trees? Walker Mill. Evergreen trees? Evergreen trees we will take, or coniferous trees. Absolutely right. Good. Green. Go. Uh, green things for 25. Green things for 25 points. Multiple choice. You know, plants are oftentimes attacked by pests. When they are, they will often release chemicals that will evaporate into the air and are picked up by insect bodyguards that come to the rescue of the plants. Are those chemicals called volatiles, neurotransmitters, or hormones? Robert Goddard for 25 points, a multiple choice. Neur oh, neurotransmitters? Not neurotransmitters. That's a good try. Walker Mill, you get a chance to earn 25 points. These chemicals that plants release to summon insect bodyguards to help them, chemicals that evaporate into the air, are known as volatiles, neurotransmitters, or hormones. Hormones? It's the one neither of you chose. Volatile means something that can evaporate easily, like alcohol and gasoline can. No points. Last correct answer was from the red team. Go, Sam. Um, let's get physical for 15. Physical for 15 points. While the terms used to describe your eye's pupil getting smaller or larger are constriction and dilation, when something physical like metal or concrete gets smaller or larger because of temperature changes, 
the terms are contraction and this. Walker Mill. Expansion? Yes, ma'am. Expansion, absolutely right. Good, go. Um, body Systems 25. Body Systems 25 points in that category is a visual question. Look at the monitor, please, in the studio. Look at these guys, arm wrestling. Arm wrestling is dangerous for teenagers since the cartilage in this arm bone, better known as the funny bone. Humorous. Walker Mill? The humerus? The humerus is absolutely right. That cartilage hasn't solidified yet into bone, and humerus was the right answer. Remember also, wait until we recognize you before you blurt out your answer. I love your enthusiasm, but just wait until we can recognize you and get the shot. Go again, green. Um, body systems 20. Body systems 20 points. I love this question. This body organ is never more than three years old, no matter your age because its hepatocytes regenerate so quickly. Robert Goddard. Liver? Liver, absolutely right. H-E-P-A, a prefix meaning liver. You jumped right on that. You got yourself 20 points. Go again, red. Um, let's get physical for 10. Physical for 10 points. Thinking that it might be the core of a failed planet, NASA plans to explore an asteroid named Psyche that orbits in a belt between these two planets. Walker Mill. Mars and Jupiter? You got it, Mars and Jupiter. The asteroid belt is between those two. Nice work. Go green. Um, science Potpourri 25. Potpourri 25, big one in that category. Teams, this is rather disgusting, but the answer is quite simple. A drone called a snot bot that collects whale snot by flying through its blow has one of these familiar science lab dishes inside to collect the mucus. Petri dish. Robert Goddard. Petri dish? A Petri dish, yes, there's a Petri dish in there. I wouldn't want to be the experimenter who had to go through all that. All right, let's check that score. 115 for Walker Mill, 95 for Robert Goddard. Great game going here, red advantage. Um. Science potpourri for 15. Potpourri, 15 points. When President Biden got COVID-19, he got it twice, he took a drug called Paxlovid, which is not an antibiotic, it's an anti-what drug? Walker Mill. Antivirus? Antivirus, absolutely right. Good answer. Green. Um, Zuprade for 25. Zuprade, 25 points. Big one in that category. Teams, narwhals look a lot like aquatic unicorns, but their horn is actually a long spiral shaped one of these body parts. Robert Goddard. The tusk, the tooth, the tooth, yeah, the tooth, the tusk, I think it's a tooth. Sam. Okay, I'm gonna go with that. A tooth? Say it again. A, a tusk. Not a tusk, not a tusk. It's Judges? Yes, we are going to take that, yes. Tusk or tooth, tooth, either one of those would have been acceptable. All right. With that, we come to the end of the first round. Our score at this juncture is Walker Mill 130, Robert Goddard 120. Yes, indeed, it is a well-matched team, a couple of teams here. We'll be back with more Science Bowl in just a moment. Welcome back. It's now time to talk to our team players and find out a little bit about themselves and their schools. Let's go first to Robert Goddard. I was saying at the top of the show that all three of today's players have been here before and uh, their skill reflects that. That experience has really done you all very well. Tell us about Robert Goddard Montessori. Who's your principal there, Sam? Miss Womack. Miss Womack is over there. And who's the coach of your team? Uh, we've got Mr. Prey and Ms. Powell. Wonderful. And they are just terrific coaches, and they, uh, I know they are all in when it comes to preparing you guys here today. Uh, something about your school that um, you think is so notable that everybody should know about it? Uh, we only have 90 middle schoolers, so you really get to know everybody. Yeah, that's important, isn't it? Yeah, you're not anonymous. You're not lost in the crowd. Did you have any alternates on your team, Sam? Yes, we've got um, Shawford and Andrea. We'll bring them out with your coaches in just a few moments here. Uh, tell me a little bit about your school, for you, uh, yourself. What do you do in your spare time? Um, I really like to 3D print, and I love assembling computers and taking them apart. Yeah, what do you want to do someday? Um, I either want to be a software developer or a um, mechanical engineer. Wonderful. And I like the shirts. You're matching shirts over there. Did you get them just for the Science Bowl? Yes. We, we're reusing them from last year, but... Yeah, they look... And those are keepers. They're not loners, right? Yeah. Yeah, but that's good to know. Sylvie, nice to have you here today. Uh, 
I know you do origami, which takes a lot of you know, concentrated work, all the detail. You're a detailed person. What do you want to do someday? Um, well, I think I want to be an artist, but I also may want to be an engineer. Or yeah. Well, they go hand in hand, you know, because yeah. you, your design, you've got to think of something, you've got to imagine it, and then somehow bring it to fruition. Um, what do you do in your spare time other than origami? Um, I like drawing, and I really like reading. And reading. Any books in particular? Um, well, I like fantasy a lot. My favorite series is Wings of Fire. Yeah, yeah. Uh, readers do so well on this program. You know, well, if you've got a good book, you don't want it to end. You just want to keep going. Teddy, nice to have you back with us, too. Tell us the Teddy story. What do you want to do someday? Uh, I, I'm still not really sure, but I think somewhere in the tech field. Yeah. You're so young, and you know, uh, life will give you so many different opportunities. You'll heck come, you know, help. you'll be influenced by so many things. Uh, but it's good to have an idea when you first start out here. Uh, what do you like about the Science Bowl, Teddy? That brings you back. I really like how you, even if you get some questions wrong, that that experience really allows you to learn new things. Yeah. And you said something very important. We want to know what you know, but I hope you take away some of the things that we're giving you. So you're, you're treating this as a, a learning experience. Good luck, guys. Great work so far. Let's go to Walker Mill. Riley, Alicia, why did you come back? We love having you here. What do you like about the game? Um, I like that it's on your toes. Like right now, I'm excited to get back into the second round, but it's like you have to, it's a test of your knowledge, but it's also fun. It's not like a test where you're sitting down and you're stressed out. Like you're nervous in the beginning, but it's really fun once you get into it. That's also a very important thing. You know, uh, life is all about poise. And no matter what happens to you, you've got to have some poise and you've got to ground yourself and try to do the best you can. And you're a great example of that. You're, uh, you have great personality and I can see your discipline over there. Tell me about Walker Mill. Who's your principal? Our principal is Miss Cribs. Yes, uh, she's a wonderful principal. And your coach? We have Miss Park and Miss G. Wonderful. You know, great coaches over there. And any alternates on your team? We have Jordan and we have Jonathan. And hopefully they're there uh, with us today and we'll be able to bring them out in just a few moments time here. Uh, what do you want to do someday? Uh, I would like to be a botanist or anything that would be related to plants because I like plants a lot. Yeah, well, I know you'll be successful whatever you want to do. Um, you've, you've got that, uh, I think you've got that drive. Navy, nice to have you here. Why did you want to be on the show? Um, it was kind of like a learning um, opportunity and also it was a chance for me to engage more in school activities. Sure, yeah. And just speak up a little louder so we can hear exactly what you say. Tell us a little bit about what you do in your spare time. Um, I play the violin, so I like to practice the violin, and I like to read. Yeah, violin. Is there an orchestra or a band over there at Walker Mill? Yes, there is an orchestra and band group. Wonderful, yeah, there. I bet you're a great addition to that. And William, uh, tell us why you wanted to do this. Um, I wanted to do this because I was excited to come on here and get some competition with yeah. the other school. Yeah, it's good. To, it's fun to be on TV, too. Yes. Yeah, because everyone's watching and you want to do your best. And, uh, uh, you're an athlete, uh, yes. soccer, lacrosse. What am I missing? Baseball and football. Yeah, all right. You're doing a nice job here today. Keep it up. All right, let's get back into the game. 120, Robert Goddard, Walker Mill, 130. It's a close one. Last correct answer came for the red team. So, Sam, let's start out round two. Um, Dateline for 15. Dateline for 15 points. Teams, this American statesman and inventor of bifocals, a stove, and the first swim fins was also a storm chaser, which explains why he wasn't intimidated when he flew his kite in a thunderstorm. Robert Benjamin Goddard. Franklin. Okay, Benjamin Franklin. Benjamin Franklin, absolutely right. Yeah, he was foolhardy, but you know, he was, he was tough. Go, red. Um, green things for 10. Green things, 10 points. Who knew there was a night shift? New research shows that moths perform this service for clover flowers at night after the bees return to their hives. Pollination. Pollination. Robert, Robert, pollination, yeah. Moths will pollinate clover at night after the bees have had their way with the clover during the day. All right, slight lead now for Robert Goddard. Go red. Um, science potpourri for 10. Potpourri for 10 points. Teams, your question. Interesting. If you count the number of times a cricket chirps in 14 seconds and then add the number 40 to that, it will give you the temperature within one or two degrees on this scale. Celsius. Goddard. Yeah, probably Celsius. Celsius? No, 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 no. Good try. Walker Mill. Cricket chirps? 
Number in 14 seconds, add the number 40 to that, and it gives you the temperature within one or two degrees on this scale. What you got? Uh, pass it to William. William. Uh, I think it might be Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit it is, absolutely right. Good answer, good comeback there. Go green. Uh, body systems 15. Body systems for 15, did you say? Yes. Yes, here it is. Your body needs small amounts of the mineral selenium to help make DNA and to keep this T-initialed endocrine gland in your neck working properly. Robert Goddard. Thyroid. Thyroid is the correct answer. Yes, Teddy, thanks for your help on that. Go Sam. Um, Dateline for 10. Dateline, 10 points. It's thought that being able to drink milk evolved in adults about 7,000 years ago during famines when those who couldn't drink milk were getting diarrhea and often dying as a result. What T initialed word describes people who can drink milk without getting sick? Yes. Tolerant. Tolerant, yes. And if it's the opposite. If you can't drink it because you get sick, that is intolerant. Lactose intolerance. Nice answer. Go red. Um, Zuprade for 15. Zuprade, 15 points. Because these birds, members of a group called corvids, C-O-R-V-I-D-S, are so smart and have learned to use tools. Remember Aesop's fable about how one got to a drink of water? Yes, Robert Goddard. Ravens. What? I think it's ravens. Is it ravens? No. Not a raven, not a raven. Walker Mill, these birds belonging to a group called corvids, not only were they able to get a drink of water in that Aesop's fable, they've even figured out how they can snowboard down a roof on a mayonnaise jar lid. They're sometimes called feathered apes. Crows. Crows is the right answer. Good comeback. Good. Go green. Um, let's get physical 25. Physical for 25 points. Big one in that category. Teams, this device, which emits light through optical amplification, is used in surgery for hair removal and to re... Yes, Lasers. Goddard. Lasers? Laser, yes. Also used to read the UPC codes on food packages in the supermarket checkout line. Go red. Um, but oh, let's get physical for 20. Physical for 20 points. The first law of thermodynamics states that this cannot be created or destroyed. But it, yes, Robert got it. Energy. Energy, yes, but it can be transferred. Can be transferred. Excellent. Go red. Uh, science potpourri for 20. Potpourri, 20 points. Your question is as follows. The name of the most distant star ever seen, originating way back in the Big Bang, is a homonym for the kingdom in the Frozen movie ruled by Queen, Queen Elsa. Arendelle? Mill. Arendelle? Arendelle is absolutely right. Thank you, Navy. Yes, indeed. It is Arendelle the star and Arendelle the kingdom. Nice answer. Good. Green. Uh, green things 20. Green things for 20 points. One of the characters in the Jurassic Park movies is a paleobotanist, a scientist whose specialty... Um, fossilized plants? Say it again. Fossilized plants? Fossilized plants are very old plants. Absolutely right. Good. Green. Zooprade for 20. Zooprade for 20 points. If an animal is ichthyophagous, it will eat fish. If an animal is saurophagus, S-A-U-R-O-P-H-A-G-I-S, it eats these even if sometimes it only gets the tail. Walker Mill. Uh, reptiles? Yes, we will give that to you. Or lizards. Sorrow is often found in dinosaur, and that was the clue that was in there. Yeah, because lizards, sometimes they lose their tail purposely so they can escape. Our score. We have a tie, 215. The advantage is green. We have a number of questions left. Riley, Alicia, you pick. Green things for five. Green things for five points. Teams, what word that indicates your ranking in a tournament, like a tennis tournament, is the same word that describes this part of the plant that can germinate and grow into a new plant? Walker Mill. 
Your seed? The seed, actually, yeah, you're seeded in the tournament. Good. I saw the light bulb go on over there. In your head, also on the, can the counter. Go again. Zoo prayed for 10. Zoo prayed for 10 points. Visual. Look at the picture in the studio, please, on the monitor. Elephants, elephant shrews, and manatees are all related to this African mammal with an Afrikaans naming earth pig. It is the first animal in the dictionary. Robert Goddard. Anteater. No, not anteater. Not anteater. Walker Mill. First animal in the dictionary. An earth Aardvark. pig in the Afrikaans language. Aardvark? Aardvark, yes. A A R D V A R K. William, nice work there. Go green. Dateline Science 25. Dateline 25 points. Big one. Two part answer. Listen carefully. What Swede invented an explosive that he originally named blasting powder? but later changed to a word that means power in Greek. Name the Swede, name what he invented. That's Alfred Nobel, and he invented dynamite, the founder of the Nobel Prizes. Go again, Green. Uh, body Systems 10. Body 10. Question as follows. The Revolutionary War General, a Revolutionary War General, is thought to have said the famous line, don't shoot till you see the whites of their eyes. The white of your eye is the sclera, S-C-L-E-R-A, while the black of your eye is this. Pupil. Pupil is right, Walker Mill. Yes, ma'am, go. Uh, Dateline for 20. Dateline, 20 points. To keep the metal in an old London bridge from cracking during the recent extreme heat in England, Engineers wrapped the bridge in silver insulation foil. How did that protect the bridge? Robert Goddard. Oh, it kept the heat. It like reflected the heat. Talk among yourselves, Walker Mill, in case I have to come to you. It reflected the heat away from the bridge, right? Because it's reflective. It reflected the heat away from the bridge. Absolutely right. It was a giant reflector. Perfect. Thank you, Sylvie, for your hope. Go, Sam. Um, let's get physical for five. Physical for five points. A total solar eclipse can only occur when the moon is in this phase. Riley Alicia. A full moon? No, not a full moon. Robert Goddard, the phase of the moon during a total solar eclipse. A new moon? A new moon is right. That's the way. Good. Go. Um, science potpourri for five. Potpourri, five points. Your question is as follows. People who snore, even those who swear they don't, make noise because they breathe through their mouth instead of their nose. And this body part falls backwards and covers the airway. Robert Goddard. Um, I nominate Teddy to say Teddy? it. Apple Goddard. <laughs> the what? Apple Goddard. Uh, no, no, no. I think you're trying to say epiglottis. No, that's not correct there. What part falls backwards and covers the airway in people who snore? The uvula? The tongue. The tongue is the right answer there. All right, go again, please, red. We still have a tie score, 240 all. Three questions left. Set. The buzzer has rung. We have run out of time, which means we have to go to a tiebreaker. It'll be sudden death. We have one question remaining. One question, and... Uh, you get to pick it, Sam. You get to pick the question. Dateline science for five. Dateline for five points. All right. Whoever gets this question right will win today's game. Listen carefully. The earthquake that occurred here in Washington in August 2011 measured 5.8 on this scale. Robert Goddard. The rich, rich Richter scale. It is the yes. Richter scale, absolutely right, which means, Robert Goddard, by five points, you are today's winner. Congratulations. We will double check that score. We will be back with you in just a moment. Welcome back, everyone. You know, this is not a game for the faint of heart. We had a tie score, it came down to that one question. That was the tiebreaker, and it just shows today, because of these scores, the skill and the poise of all of our players. We are proud of each and every one here. Robert Goddard has 245, Walker Mill 240. A round of applause for that Walker Mill team. And another round of applause for the Robert Goddard team. Tremendous work here. 
Sam, would you be good enough to introduce all the people you brought with you today? Uh, so I've got my I've got my coaches, Mr. Prey and Ms. Powell, and then I've got the alternates, Shawford and Andrea. You're all part of that team. Coaches, thank you for your wonderful work. We'll see you in the next game. Riley, Alicia, tell us all those folks back there. We have Miss Cribs, Jonathan, Jordan, and Miss G. And Miss G. G. That's right, indeed. Thank you so much. Thank you all for watching. We hope to see you next time on another edition of Science Bowl. Until then, I'm Dave Zarin. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.